Aloha guys, my name is James Aptekin and uh, the term executive chef, whatever you wanna call it, uh, passion. I've been doing this 26 passionate years. I was born and raised in Miami and I was adopted at the age of four and I lived in 12 different foster homes and the funny thing was my mom was my mentor and she was an artist and I'd go to art shows with her so I picked up art at a young age. I was using chopsticks at the age of six and I was cooking full out Pan Asian meals by fifth grade and at that time, Nobody did that. And the reason for that is she read to get a child to eat, to involve them in the process, they'll eat more. And I was like a skinny little rail and, and it worked. And by fifth grade, I was, I was hooked. That was it. My fondest memories were cooking shortbread cookies with the jam in the middle, going to my best friend's houses and there'd be a roasted pig in the, ba in the backyard in the ground. There'd be 80 to 100 people. It didn't matter who you were, what you drove, what you did. It didn't matter because that night, all that mattered was the music, 90 year old grandma us dancing merengue salsa, it was the pig in the ground, it was sharing food, it brought people together through good and bad times, and that was it. That was my childhood and I was hooked. Miami's hot, vibrant, exciting. I joined the military cooking for 6,000 people on an aircraft carrier, uh, got stationed in Alameda, and that's what brought me to California. 6,000 people, oh my God, intense. Then I went to the two top schools. School's only a foundation, but it gave me, it drove me some passion. That's what, that's what this is all about. I'm excited to be sitting in front of you guys doing the, the one of the first 360 experiences and talking about Aloha, talking about my passion for food. You're in my home. You're with me. I'm going to take you as if you're my, my, my son, my daughter, my, my, my wife, my, my family, my Ohana, and we're going to step through this and I'm going to show you how easy it is to cook like a rock star because today's world, we all want to be rock stars, whether to our friends, our family. Um, just a real quick what brought me to Hawaii. I studied five pioneer regional Hawaiian, the, the founders of Hawaiian regional cuisine. And uh, my wife is born and raised there. And when I went there, I just fell in love with it. And, and I'll tell you why. I mean, just from the Hawaiian moonfish that we're going to see her today, to the ginger carrot tom yum broth, to the exciting fun colors, to that vibrant watercress that we're going to be doing, to the coconut basmati rice using the exotics, and just Wait till you see what we found in the farm. Just going to the fishermen, catching the fish, going to the farms, cutting it. This was all in the ground yesterday. And that volcanic ash and that ocean and just that, oh, what it does is just, just it, it, it does aloha, it hugs and kisses those vegetables, the fish, and it's just, it's unreal. And it makes people like me, I take the best ingredients, I work with them, I share them with you, and that's what this is all about. So let's get going. This is the Tom Yum, Tom Yum uh, Ginger Carrot Tom Yum Broth. And what we're doing is we're making a really, really fun sauce here. And what I mean by that is you want a hot pan as we have here, and we use mac nut oil. I, yep, I said mac nut oil, not just olive oil, not just regular oil. And that's the cool thing about Hawaii is we have all these exotic, cool ingredients. How do I get that? Amazon. Do you don't have it? Use regular oil, it's just fine. But we're gonna go ahead and put that beautiful mac nut oil on there. And we're gonna start off with our ginger first. What we're doing is an aromatic. Look at that caramelization we're about to do. This is unreal. Um, but you gotta remember, garlic burns, okay? So you wanna smell it. That's our garlic right there. And that's our ginger. So we wanna jump in our ginger right there. And you wanna do our shallots next. And this is so quick and easy, guys. Then your garlic, because you don't want to burn it. At this point, you're going to put in your caramelize it with a little coconut milk and sugar. And this is our Hawaiian sugar, by the way. And if you don't have Hawaiian sugar, no problem at all. Get a free facial. You don't have to go out to the store. This is what's so awesome about it. This is real life, guys. Um, you take this. And you let the sugar do the work. The sugar is actually gonna caramelize into a caramel. What makes a caramel? Water and sugar. Well, if you take coconut milk and sugar, it does the same thing without burning. That's the secret right there. Then we take some lemongrass. Lemongrass is that aromatic, that lemony, that exoticness, if you will. And that's what really brings this together. And then we got our kefir lime. That, oh my God. <laughs> They made a cologne out of that. I would like spray it on and like use it every day. So again, you got your aromatics in here, ginger, car ginger, shallots, garlic, lemongrass. Then you got your kefir lime. And then you got your sambal, which is a chili garlic paste. And right now, if you think about it, you have an aromatic chili caramel. Doesn't that sound like super cool? 
Maybe the kids won't eat that because it's more of an adult, but just wait till we do, wait till you see what we do with this. You want to caramelize that down. Once that caramelizes down, okay, um, you're going to get that nice caramel, that deep rich flavor. We're going to take some rice wine vinegar. Uh, you can use Aloha, we use Aloha shoyu, like their, their white vinegar. Um, we like to say Aloha is kissed from the ocean. Um, it's taking our soul and hugging yours in, in the breath of life and the ha. And from our heart, we're saying aloha and hi, not just a handshake or hi or this or that. And it's kind of like what the food is. It's, it's just on steroids. It's passionate. It's exciting. Awesome. And then we're going to take that vinegar and we're going to reduce that down. And then we're going to take our chicken stock. Go ahead and put it in our chicken stock there. And this is the cool part. Now, we use the coconut milk also to, for our caramel, but we're gonna go ahead and silk in it. And we're gonna put that coconut milk in just like that. And just, you get this beautiful, perfect, like just silky color, like not too dark, nice, beautiful color, and that's key to this sauce. And you just let that reduce down just like that. And the other secret to this is we got our carrots. And what I'm doing is I'm actually boiling the carrots. And by boiling the carrots, this is super cool. Like this, we're just gonna get them super soft. Once they're soft, we're gonna go ahead and put that into the Vitamix. And we're gonna put a little secret to the trade of why I won the World Food Championship with seafood. And I'm gonna share that with you today. So the next step we want to do is we want to get the coconut basmati rice into the steamer. Why? It, we do it in segments. So the reason why we did the ginger carrot sake broth first is boiling the carrots takes about 20 minutes, right? You make your broth, you set it aside. We're going to do our coconut rice, set it into the steamer. And while we're doing that, then we move on to our salsa. We move on to our watercress. We sear the fish. And just like everybody coming together, all one big happy family, everything works exactly the way you do at home. Okay, so why did I pick the salsa? Um, let me just walk you through a little something. Uh, I was just uh, at the World Food Championship and we took first place in the world on seafood. And there's no sense in bragging unless I'm sharing. And what's amazing is I have this opportunity with the 360 to like, bring you into our home and, and do this for you. Um, anytime you have a fresh fish like opa, which is Hawaiian moonfish, you want some acidity, you want some acid on that. You really want to bring out the flavors without masking the flavor. Very important. So um, I picked a kahuku corn, which is really sweet on the North Shore in um, Haleiwa, North North Shore Hawaii um, country and it's just absolutely stunning and beautiful over there and then I use the Okinawa sweet potato you can use purple Peruvian potatoes this is our kahuku sweet corn you husk it right off the husk and literally eat it just raw like this you get that nice crunch that sweetness that's exactly what you want it's almost like ceviche the lime juice is gonna cook it a little bit but not too much and keep it nice and raw and raw veg are good for you um, and we're gonna use that beautiful hearts of palm and, and keep it more exotic. But again, people eat with, with their eyes, so color is so important. And if you look, what I'm doing here, I'm doing a fine julienne. I sliced it thin, doing a fine julienne, and then I'm doing a nice mince. Because remember, when you're putting presentation on a fish, you don't want it to be too big and too bulky. You just want it to be really fine. And the good news is you don't have to use that much. You don't have to work as hard. And you just go ahead and put that in the bowl like this. And the good thing about a salsa is you can make it a day ahead of time. You can stick it in the refrigerator. It's, um, it's fun, it's easy. You can get the kids, you can get people to help you do it. So we're gonna just go ahead. And this cutting board I'm using is from Hawaii. It's, uh, it's Opima wood and hardwoods are really good because they don't harbor bacteria. So it's beautiful and plus it's part of the island, it's part of the nature, it's part of our culture, aloha. It just feels good. So you got that purple, um, Okinawa sweet potato, you got that beautiful kahuku corn. Just the color alone looks gorgeous. We're gonna take this beautiful hearts of palm again. And this, we're not gonna chop this up. We're gonna cut it into nice rings because the rings have texture and, and again, it's artistic. It's like, it has that beautiful art to it because of the rings. You don't wanna mess that up. And plus it's easier. Um, 
And then we just put a little of that Hayden mango in there. I remember me and my brother growing up as kids, we grew up to climb up the tree and the juice would just drip down our arm. It was just mm, bringing back my childhood now. A little bit of uh, Hawaiian sea salt. You can use kiave, you can use black Hawaiian. Um, we're gonna use a little bit of Maui onion or red onion. Red onion, when it, when it takes on that lime juice, it actually turns that fuchsia purple color, which is a really nice thing to do too. Um, then we take our limes. You can push it, you can squeeze it, you can put it into the microwave. You wanna cut the ends just like this. If you don't have a juicer or a fancy juicer at home, that's okay. Take your, take your ends like that, just squeeze all the juice out. And then this last part, this is the cool trick. I'm gonna actually do this for you right here. This is where I get to have fun with the kids or I make fun with my wife. We just stick our finger right in there like a thumb and you just kind of squeeze and you push it around like this. How cool is that? And then I turn around to my guests or my wife or the kids or I tell the kids, go, hey, go up to your mom and do this and go, hey mom, look, like my ring? I got a green thumb and talk about agriculture. Um, just get, you know, again, have fun in the kitchen, guys. This is what it's all about. If we're not having fun, we're just cooking. Cooking's good, having fun, now we're cooking. So we go ahead and put our lime juice in there. And I use a little bit of sriracha for the heat. And I'm gonna put a beautiful black, cracked, crushed black pepper in there. And that's it, guys. Just set that aside. And wait till you see the colors just bloom later. Just, but look at it already. Just within seconds. Look at that purple. Look at it just popping. Look at that just clean, nice, beautiful colors on there. That's what's going to make your opa just pop and make people go, ooh, ah. Aloha guys. So now we're doing the veg and the perfect thing about Hawaii is the volcanic ash to weather the ocean. It just does something to the veg and as chefs we go out and we talk to the farmers and, and literally everything you see here was in the farms yesterday. I went out, cut it, talked to the owners, got the story on it. Everything's about story and sharing and that's what we're doing here. Um, we love our watercress. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that beautiful mac nut oil and again if you don't have uh, mac nut oil you can do just regular oil. And, um, and we want to keep it as fresh and healthy as possible. We really don't want to cook the nutrients and that beautiful color and the flavor. We just want to shock it. So the beautiful thing about the watercress is you just take your scissors like this right from the ground. And it's like almost like giving it a haircut. You just go ahead and cut that right in there. You can hear it sizzling. And we want to be really careful. It's going to be a really quick dish because we don't want to cook the, that watercress. It's so gorgeous. Then we're going to take a little bit of that baby arugula some beautiful carrots that I shaved real nice and thin right right from the ground and then we take this beautiful um, purple cauliflower and just shave that in there for a little bit of color and again the more raw and bite and crunch and texture and color that's that's what it's all about guys it's about paradise we even have this beautiful purple broccoli and I mean come on purple broccoli I didn't even know it existed so I just want to take a little bit of that off in there we got our ginger, shallots, and garlic. Throw a little bit of that in there. And remember, we got that kiabi, so we're gonna add a little smoke flavor, that Hawaiian sea salt. And a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper. And you can have this set up ahead of time, and when you're ready to cook, right before dinner, hit it with a little chicken stock, keep it nice and healthy. No butter in this at all. Give it a nice spin, nice toss, and that's it. You got a beautiful Hawaiian garden style vegetable for this Opa Hawaiian dish. That's all guys. Aloha. Okay, so now what I did was I took you through the segments, okay? We went ahead and did the ginger carrot sake broth, so it's nice and ready. We got the coconut basmati rice working, that's just finishing right now. We did our beautiful vegetable that's just sitting here right ready for us. Now we got our fish, and then after that we put it all together. See how the sequence works? Fish is only going to take about six minutes, so you want to leave the integrity. Because if you think about it, the fishermen, they went out, they spearfished this, they caught it right from the ocean this morning. Hawaiian moonfish is no, also known as 
Opa is one of my personal favorites. You got this beautiful, it's a prize fish here. It's like this red, orange, gorgeous color on one side and silver on the other. And different parts, like the cheeks are bright red, the back is pink, the belly has a nice rich and fatness that's great for sushi. And then the rest of the skin is a little bit pinkish, but here's the best part. It's not fishy, it's very neutral in flavor. It's got enough richness and fattiness that if you cook it just right and you want that perfect medium, it's gonna be so succulent and juicy of what you know Hawaii to be. So starting off with that, a lot of people cut their fish thin and that's a big mistake. You wanna get a nice, beautiful, um, this, this is a nice center cut right here, this beautiful loin. And you wanna cut straight down and I'll tell you why. Why we're doing that, you wanna go ahead and get your pan on. Notice how I didn't have my pan already on. Everybody, it's if you get the best quality of the fish and the right technique, you're going to be the rock star and you're going to win awards. And I'm going to tell you why I won the World Food Championship. It's how you crust that fish and how you cook it. If you get a really hot pan, it's going to burn. If you put too many seasonings on it, it's going to burn. So you want that medium heat. Take your time with it. This is something that can't be rushed. A nice, beautiful oil in here is all you need. You want to coat it just the bottom of the pan because you don't want your fish to stick. It's about building that crust. And you see the thickness on there. It's not too thick, not too thin, and that way the center is going to be nice and juicy. And here's the thing, don't over complicate the seasoning. Salt and pepper, that's it. If you go any more than that, what's going to happen is you're going to end up burning the presentation side of your fish. And the most important thing is the skin side down is the one that you want to leave up and the presentation down first because we're working on presentation, the part that people are going to eat and that crust. That's the secret to a beautiful piece of fish. I'm going to go ahead and put two pieces down. Remember, just salt and pepper. And you don't want to crowd the pan. That's another secret too. And remember that seasoning with the salt and pepper goes down first. It's just gorgeous. While that cooks, I'm gonna share with you about the World Food Championship. And as I talk to you, we're gonna see this white opaque color coming up. A lot of people rush the fish and they go in too soon and they take away that skin. That's the best part. They take away the crust, that's the best part. They think they have to put it in the oven or cook it both evenly on both sides. The bottom part of the fish, you don't even worry about it. Three quarters of the way is, is the secret to Michelin star, fine dining, and some of the best chefs in the world, which is now you guys, because I'm sharing my secret. Okay, so now when your body's telling you, I have to turn the fish over, you're probably right about there. And let me show you what I'm talking about. You see that bottom crust right there? And you see how it just went halfway through, just right there? And you see that crust, you hear it? That's perfect right there. When we drop that over, you need maybe one minute on that side. And just look at the color on that. That crust, that salted caramelized crust is what's going to give you all the